Usually the games I cover are ones that could be labelled hidden or forgotten gems, a result of bad marketing or niche appeal. Now when you have a major title that was in development for years, the hype tends to be what most people will remember it for. So was the case for 2006's Prey, a game that was regarded at launch and remembered as a simplistic tech demo. Its traditional linear gameplay doomed it to being overshadowed by more substantial titles like COD 4 and Halo 3. Fortunately, time has been kind to this decade old game. Prey's ease of accessibility and effective functionality makes it an enjoyable swan song to FPS's of yore. Makes sense with it being envisioned by 3D Realms all the way back in 1995. Now try not to raise an eyebrow to the concept. You play as Tommy, an American Cherokee who's tired of the reserve he lives on with his girlfriend Jen and Grandpa. But before any bullshit drama takes place, aliens attack the bar Jen works at, fucking everyone's shit up. Badly. After being imprisoned within the bowels of a colossal sphere-like space station, you escape with only a wrench to start rescuing your family and stop the annihilation of humanity from being processed. Borg style. One of the main story gameplay mechanics is introduced shortly after you start playing, with Tommy dying. An abrupt ending if it weren't for your awakening in the spirit realm, where you gain the power of resurrection and being able to hop out of your physical body, bypassing environmental barriers. But it's all pretty straightforward stuff, there's not much lore or complex motives, all events and objectives play out in a very half-life fashion, platforms of some sort of cinematic set piece and characters detailing what you must do before you can proceed. On that note, the character models are pretty fucking dated, Gramps looks like a mole man and Jen's ears are stretched to elf-like proportions. Luckily, the voice acting is strong across the board, making these one-note personalities rather endearing. Tommy himself is a likeable dude who manages to avoid the typical action cliches and handles early encounters with a realistic sense of surprise and confusion at what the fuck is going on. If Prey's story is weak in any department, it's in how its tone seems inappropriately dark for how basic it is. Hey, I can take watching kids getting gruesomely murdered most days of the week, but you're playing as a fucking American Indian who's battling legions of evil aliens in space with only a jacket for bodily protection. This setup for a serious yet humorous adventure is squandered once you start blowing away ghost children. Oh, scary. Either way, at its core, praise an FPS through and through, a very traditional one in terms of its combats, pace and feel. Tommy's wrench is quickly forgotten in favour of some very alien firearms that often serve mobile purposes. You have the typical accurate rifle and heavy machine gun, as well as more creative tools like the leech gun that can absorb different energy sources, giving its ammo special properties. Generally what makes the weapons so interesting is their aesthetic appeal. They have a very organic mechanical hybrid look to them in line with the macabre design of the enemies and the environment. They remind me a lot of Half-Life's weapon roster with how they're introduced into the world as tools used by the opposition. Reloading isn't even a thing. Ammunition for a weapon is piled together before being spent. This keeps a constant flow of bullets and explosions heading towards your target. No iron sights or realistic handling, you're rewarded with a beautiful array of carnage, ragdolls and neat effects. My favourite being dissolving peeps of an acidic based shotgun. Awesome. Breaking up the hallway crawling are these light vehicle sections which allow you to view the size of some of these maps and their distinctive sci-fi look, while also being a throwback to 360 degree shooters like Descent. It's frustrating that while clearly being old school, the whole game is really, really easy. It's not a weapon or a tactic that breaks the difficulty, instead it's that you can't die. After you gain access to the spirit realm, whenever you sustain too much damage and die, your teleport just limbo like arena before you respawn right back into the action. During these moments you can shoot down phantoms refilling more of your health when you pop back up, making healing items and conserving health totally pointless. You can die as much as you like, whenever you like, for no penalties. If that sounds like the death kneel of any challenge, you'd be right. This is something that could have easily have been optional as part of a difficulty mode or limited in use. But no, it's across the entire game. But surely there's a hard mode when it's disabled. No, there isn't. After beating it for the first time, you can play on a harder mode, yet the resurrection biz is still in full swing. Bioshock had the vitter chambers, but at least there yet to find them and were punished with new enemies appearing, not thrown back into the fray to finish off your opponent. It sucks since otherwise the combat is great stuff, with barely another misstep, but this issue is really hard to ignore when it's so prominent in the combat. While fighting, you'll be progressing through some very linear and directed environments. Exploration is practically non-existent with everything you need presented to you. Backtracking rarely if ever occurs, and there's very few slow moments or lengthy breaks between the action. There's no key hunting besides picking up a severed hand or figuring out puzzles that were frequent in contemporary shooters. Pressing stuff is done like in Doom 3, which gives you a very nice hands-on feel to simple activities. 
Frequently, you'll be blocked by a seemingly dead end, which means you need to switch into the spirit form to clear the way. This may entail pressing a switch or finding a code for the door, and even totally changing the layout of the room. Unfortunately, it never really gets more complex or interesting, a shame since it could have functioned like the Spectral Realm in Soul Reaver where you needed both forms to work in tandem. What will compel and leave a lasting impact on you are the tricks that play with your sense of perception using the highly impressive graphical engine at work, notably being size and angle. Walkway belts have you fighting dudes on the ceiling, gravity switches flip the entire room. It's a lot more chaotic than what you'd normally expect while moving through an alien infested spaceship. Easily Prey's greatest moments revolve around using portals. A year before Valve's own portal, Prey has your mind being blown away in how seamless they use. You'll pass through one location to the next immediately, which seemed like black magic then and still impresses me now. Less common but still great are the times you venture into huge expansive rooms of suspended moons that you traverse on, all while fighting on foot or on a hovercraft. It effectively portrays the size of the world in a really thematic way. This honestly makes Prey a frustrating experience at times. There's always great ideas tethered to a fairly simplistic title. It's clear the long, muddled development stopped it from being a hit to the 90s experience. Instead, it's a I wonder what really neat shit we can pull off with this engine type of product. And yeah, when it all works, it's pretty fucking incredible, if only to be creative with the straightforward gameplay. Don't get the wrong idea, Prey is a fun game with lots of memorable features and charm. Also, its cheap price tag certainly helps the buying process. So you're ultimately left with a title that's only a sum of its parts.